large group of Marines has advanced into enemy territory. This company has relaxed in the comparative security of a forward area bivouac when suddenly... Condition red! Condition red! The enemy has opened a chemical attack and some of his gas has probably contaminated food in the supply dump. This film will show you how to detect food contamination. Normally, food is tested for contamination by men of the headquarters and service company. The medical department is also concerned, since later it will have to certify that food supplies are or are not fit for consumption. However, the man who does the actual work is from the headquarters and service company. If possible, find an uncontaminated atmosphere where you can prepare reagents for the tests, as described in the manual. Also, check each type of test paper for contamination or deterioration. Perform the tests upwind from the supply dump in an area free of gross contamination. The tests must be made before any supplies have been moved and before the outer layers have been removed from any coverings on the food. Test all drops of liquid and all stains or discolorations plus representative areas of exposed surfaces facing the suspected source of chemical attack. You are now ready to perform the actual tests in the exact order indicated by the manual. To start the G-Agents test, take one test paper from the open tested packet with the yellow dot. Always hold the papers as close to the end as possible when handling. Now press the test paper against each surface to be screened with the sandy side down and hold it there for 20 to 30 seconds. Remember, hold the paper on each spot for 20 to 30 seconds. When you have held the one test paper against every suspected surface, apply reagents as directed in the manual. With the sandy side up, Use a sift of A, a sift of B, a drop of E, a drop of G, Wait up to three minutes for a change in color, but no longer. If there is no appreciable color change in three minutes, the test for G agents is negative. Continue with tests for other agents. A definite color change to yellow or orange indicates possible contamination of the supplies by G agents. Confirm the results by testing another paper from the same packet without exposing it to the suspected surfaces. The papers themselves may have become contaminated since you checked them. Use the same reagents. If there is no appreciable change, the papers are not contaminated. You have confirmed that the food supplies are contaminated with G agents. If a definite yellow or orange color appears, the papers themselves are contaminated. Discard the entire packet and open a new one. Test one paper from that packet. Keep testing until you find a packet that is not contaminated. When you get a negative result, use a fresh paper from the newly tested packet 
to check all suspected surfaces for G-agents again. This time, you can depend on the results. Stop all further tests and start decontamination if the results are positive. Continue if they are negative. For the mustards and cyanogen chloride test, use a test paper from the open tested packet with the blue dot. Press the paper against each of the surfaces to be screened with the sandy side down. Again, hold it on each surface for 20 to 30 seconds. The test paper may change color even before you apply the reagents. A yellow or red color on the sandy side indicates the presence of cyanogen chloride. Even if the color is present, continue testing for mustard. Pick up the paper and hold it metallic side up. Apply one or two drops of reagent C. Wait for the reagent to boil. It may spatter. Allow it to boil for 30 seconds. Now add one or two additional drops of reagent C and wait another 30 seconds. Turn the paper over and add a drop or two of reagent D. If a rust color appears within five minutes, the test for mustards is negative. If a deep blue or purple color appears, contamination by mustards is indicated. Again, however, you must confirm the results by checking the test papers themselves for contamination. When you've completed the mustards check, proceed to the next test, whether mustards contamination of the surfaces is confirmed or not. Begin the test for arsenicals by placing a small amount of reagent E on each of the suspected surfaces. Then take one test paper from the open tested packet with the red dots. Press it against each of the surfaces to be screened. Hold the greenish side of the test paper against the spots moistened by reagent for 20 to 30 seconds each. After holding the paper against the suspected surfaces, watch for a color change. If the only color change is to another shade of green, the food supplies are not contaminated by arsenicals. If yellow or orange or any shade of red appears, contamination of the surfaces by arsenicals is indicated. Once more, confirm the results by checking the test papers for contamination. This time, of course, apply reagent E directly to the paper. If contamination of the food supplies by arsenicals is confirmed, stop all testing. If arsenical contamination is not found, proceed to the next test, if it is applicable in your case. The detector crayon test differentiates between mustard and nitrogen mustard. 
use it only if mustards were found and G agents and arsenicals were not. Take the detector crayon from its plastic cover. Take a piece of white note paper from pad H in the kit. Make a spot of pink about one inch long on the paper. Press the pink spot against every contaminated surface, holding it about a minute on each one. Watch for a color change after each application. If there is no change in color, assume contamination by nitrogen mustard only. If the pink spot changes to blue, assume contamination by mustard or by a combination of mustard and nitrogen mustard. This is the last test for contamination of the food supply. Conclude the job by repacking the kit. Make sure that everything is in the proper compartments with all colors matched. Place the bag of silica gel on top of the test papers. Any contamination of the food supply by chemicals has been detected. To review, be sure that all areas of gross contamination are included when testing for contamination of food. Use the correct paper for each test. Papers in the packets marked with yellow dots are for the G agents test. A definite color change to yellow or orange on the test paper indicates contamination of supplies with G agents. Use papers from packets marked with the blue dots to test for cyanogen chloride and mustards. A yellow or red color on the paper indicates contamination with cyanogen chloride. A deep blue or purple color indicates contamination with mustard. Use papers from packets marked with the red dots to test for arsenicals. Yellow, orange, or any shade of red on the test paper indicates contamination with arsenicals. Use the detector crayon to differentiate between mustards, but only after obtaining negative tests for arsenicals and G agents. Color a piece of white paper from the kit with the crayon. If there's no change in color on the paper after exposing it, contamination with nitrogen mustard only is indicated. A change of color from pink to blue indicates contamination by mustard or by a combination of mustard and nitrogen mustard. When you have found contamination of any type, you are ready to start the job of reclamation.